Hollywood has lied to people about the effectiveness of crossbows after the apocalypse. Notice every time Daryl from The Walking Dead takes a shot, they pan away. That's because crossbows take a lot of time and or strength in order to reload. Here's what the reality would look like. Oh no, zombies! What am I gonna do? Have no fear! Guy with the crossbow is here! Haha, <laughs> take this, you carnivores! Haha, <laughs> eat your face! You guys are way too aggressive, man! Oh no, there's more! Well, I guess I'm gonna have to reload this sucker. Here we go. Oh man, it's not as easy as they made it look in the movies. Alright! Oh, come on, man, I'm not ready! Hey, 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 just wait, wait, time out, time Hey, you guys got a light? Oh man! But here's the solution to this problem. Oh, it's clearly my lucky day. See you later, suckers. This is getting old. You want some too? Come and get it. Let's tango. Yeah. Didn't want to do this, but see you later, sucker. folks, Canadian Prepper here. I am super stoked today to show you this beauty, man. I've shown you guys a lot of crossbows on the channel before. This is the best by far. This is a compound auto reloading with a auto loading magazine on top that feeds the bolts in there. And boy, is this thing powerful and accurate. As the saying goes, let me show you its features. Okay, so the question is, why a crossbow for the apocalypse? Obviously, you gotta get your shotgun, your semi-auto, your pistols, and all that good stuff first, but every prepper should have a string range projectile weapon at their disposal for the number one reason, and that is stealth and silence. Now you can achieve stealth and silence with a normal recurve bow, a long bow, or even a compound bow but those require a lot of skill and training to master. But just like a gun, once you get your scope or your laser sighted in, it's simply a matter of pointing and shooting and keeping the thing steady. Whenever you're using bolts or arrows, there is the potential to reuse that ammunition. And of course, we all know ammunition is gonna be in short supply after the shizzy hits the fizzy. One of the biggest drawbacks of using a crossbow, not only are they heavy, they're unwieldy. The ammo is also rather large. This solves uh, several of those. Number one, it has a very narrow profile. It also is fast reloading. You can shoot 10 arrows in a minute with this thing. And the ammo that it uses is very small. These are very small bolts, but don't underestimate them. They're still incredibly powerful. Now its predecessor is the Cobra Adder crossbow. You've probably seen that one. The great thing about that one is that it's a recurve platform, so it's not compound. One of the benefits of that is that it's a much simpler design. So you could, if you needed to, engineer your own bowstring. The problem with that platform is that because it was less powerful, you couldn't get accuracy beyond 30 to 35 yards. With this one, you can be accurate out to nearly 70 meters and still have that takedown power you're gonna need to bring down medium to large game. So what you have here is a highly versatile platform because you can shoot short or long bolts on it. If you want to shoot the short bolts and utilize this fast feeding system, then you can put your six short bolts in here. You just close this up, push this button down, and that's going to keep the tension on there and that's going to auto feed them into place. You can remove this entirely and then you can shoot longer bolts. It does come with this adjustable buttstock. Right now we have the laser sight on there, so we can just shoot from the hip because I have this sighted in and there is the pistol grip on the front. This is the only other pick rail option you have right now. I have the pistol grip on there. 
It's not the most sturdiest, but you don't really need it to be that sturdy because again, it's not like you're shooting bullets out of this thing. One of the other benefits of a crossbow, and this might not always be the case, but it is the case right now, and that's that you don't need a firearms license to own one. So let's head on down to the studio, but not before we head out to the range. We were able to confirm the company's stated velocity of 320 feet per second and a projectile energy of 50 foot pounds, more than enough for large game. Consistently, we were shooting between 300 and 320 feet per second with our 190 grain arrows. I was thoroughly impressed with the durability of something that has its share of moving parts. As much of an evolution as it is in crossbow technology, it's a surprisingly simple design that is very robust and intuitive to use. The more you use the bow, the easier it becomes to cock. Doing the motion over and over again obviously builds that muscle memory that's going to make it a lot easier. We decided to have some fun also by blasting a few things in slow motion. Because why not? Let's check it out. Cue the music. When we were out in the field, I decided to use the scope. It was incredibly easy. I sighted the laser indoors and was able to get pinpoint precision. This was incredibly easy, although my sighting in wasn't perfect. It still proved to be very accurate out to 50 yards and adjust for elevation loss over long distances. I'm confident that I would be able to hit vitals on large game up to 50 yards out. The bow is surprisingly not that loud with some good rubber stoppers. When I sighted with the laser indoors, I was able to get pinpoint precision and consistent headshots at 15 to 20 yards. I could have easily pushed this out further. Unfortunately, we only had so much room in our indoor makeshift shooting range. We tried to shoot a variety of different other things like this pumpkin, but honestly, it wasn't that exciting. So I decided to smash it instead. To demonstrate the foot-pound power of the siege, we also decided to shoot a few cans of food that we had stashed away for the apocalypse. As you can see here, it went through both, but got stuck in the second one. Still pretty impressive in my opinion. It went clean through several aluminum cans and made quick work of these two liter bottles of pop. Man, does that look cool. We wanted to see how these smaller, lighter weight bolts would perform against real flesh. So we busted out a beef brisket and we shot it to hell. The arrow went clean through 4 to 5 inches of meat, but it did become lodged about 12 inches into the meat. This is a satisfactory performance based on the specifications of the bow. If you want to get one of these, go check out gogun.co. Links will be posted in the description. Alright guys, so this is the old adder. You've seen my video review of this. This is the recurve version, one string, very simple. The problem is not that powerful, only around 175 feet per second. And that means that you're only getting accurate and powerful shots out to about 30 or 40 yards. Now that of course has all been resolved. First they came out with the normal siege, okay? And the great thing about this is, is that yes, you can fast reload, but it didn't have that onboard magazine like the Adder did. So of course that brings us to the video today where we're showing you this siege bow with the actual magazine on top of it, okay? Now let's just go over all the different component pieces of the siege. Okay, so here's the two variations of this bow. This one has the fast loading magazine on top. This one doesn't. This one can shoot 15 inch bolts. This one can shoot the mini bolts. I believe they're around seven or eight inches long. Both have the same platform and what you're seeing in front of me here is all the component pieces. First off, we have our four by 32 scope. We also have this accessory item. You can buy this separately. It's a flashlight slash green laser dot combo works very well. That's currently what I have on my siege bow. We have the fast loading magazine. Thing I like about this one is that it's a lot easier to load than the adder. So you just go like that and then you could raise this thing up and you insert your arrows one by one. And because the bolts are so small, that is one of the real selling points of this thing for me. Usually one of the drawbacks of crossbows or bows is that the ammo is so big. You know, compare that to the size of a bullet, right? A bullet is like 20 times smaller. That's what's advantageous about this. You can carry 40 shots in a relatively small quiver. Then of course, you have your compound bow assembly. You can actually 
remove the string and replace the string yourself. The company has a tutorial on how to do that. You don't need a dedicated bow press, which is a big selling point for me because like a compound bow like this is gonna require a sophisticated bow press and a lot of know-how in order to restring this thing without injuring yourself or doing damage to the bow. So if you are buying this with preparedness in mind, you can get yourself an extra bow string and you can be confident in knowing that you'll be able to restring it if you need to. Now, you can also adjust the poundage and the power of the bow. So right here, you have these hex keys that you can utilize and the more torque you put on it, basically the more powerful it's gonna be. And you can't really see it on the camera, but there are little notches in here and that indicates the amount of power. And you can adjust it between 115 pounds and 150 pounds. So there's a variety of different uh, rail and mounting components here in order to switch out the magazine. It is a bit of a job, it's not a huge job, but in order to convert it to accept the little arrows, uh, and convert it back to accept the 15 inch arrows, it's gonna take about 10 to 15 minutes of tinkering. We have the removable adjustable buttstock at the back here, very heavy duty. And we have the main crossbow component here. The cool thing about this is that when this is on there, uh, there, if you're not familiar with what's called the let off point, typically with any compound bow, there's going to be what's called the let off point. So here I'm applying tension, I'm applying tension, and then it lets off. So I can basically hold this now all day, okay? So right here is where it's hardest, okay? Then you get past that let off point and it's a little easier. And then you just latch it in like that. So we're going to immediately put that to green. We're gonna make sure we don't point that at anybody. I'll ask that the communist cameraman um, stay over there because it's not time to take him out just yet. Just to show you the power of this bow, one of its greatest strengths is also one of its greatest drawbacks. The fact that you could use such small ammunition, but it's also very accurate is great. The problem is, is that it's so powerful and those arrows are so short. Look what happened to Fred's head here, okay? This is deadly accurate. I mean, I was trying not to hit my own arrows, but we're generally aiming for the eye. And uh, I'm very impressed with those shots and you could see the amount of penetration this is very heavy duty archer's foam. Typically you're not supposed to use this with cross bolts because they get stuck in here and uh, pulling them out is a real pain in the ass. It can be done, but it's problematic. So that's just showing you how much penetration we got there almost all the way through. So that's like, I don't know, what would that be? Five, six inches of penetration on a good day, I guess. And uh, that's what, she said, come on, got to throw one of those in there. Typically they go in so deep that they're going to damage these veins. As long as you have a little super glue in your bug out bag, that's not a problem because you can fix veins rather easy. And also what tends to happen is the veins will ripple up because they'll go through a target or whatever you're shooting at and that just causes warping of the vein. You can easily fix that. You can actually heat them up with a lighter and just smooth them out. Just wear a pair of rubber gloves and you can smooth them out. When, when you've done archery for a while, you probably already have an archery maintenance kit. If you do lose the veins and it's SHTF, you can replace this with feathers, okay? You can glue feathers onto here. Two dimensional feathers, in fact, feathers might even work better. You can get either the broadhead arrows or you can get the field point arrows. They're the same length, different grain, obviously. You can put a variety of different field points on these. I'm not sure what the actual measurement is of the field point. And the broadheads will work in this magazine because they have 2D veins. Now the 2D veins mean that you're not gonna get as good of an accuracy out to further distances. For obvious reasons, you cannot stack 3D veins on top of each other, or at least they haven't devised a system for you to do that yet. There is a foregrip, which honestly, not very necessary. Uh, it's gonna allow you to shoot from the hip a bit better, might allow you to get a better uh, grip, uh, enabling a better, more uh, stable, sturdy sight picture. You, you have enough real estate right here and it's not that heavy, okay? You probably could 
uh, get up to it up here, but you do want to stay away from that string. So I wouldn't advise putting your hand up here. So yeah, I mean, having this helps. Go and pick one of these up guys. You will be pleasantly surprised. I certainly was not only at the power, at the accuracy, at the ease of use, and even the durability. For the price point, you're getting one of the most innovative crossbow evolutions that we've seen to date on the planet. That's actually not a bad deal. Get it before it's made illegal. I have a feeling, I have a sneaking suspicion that these aren't gonna last on the Canadian market for too long. I think, and I think Jorge Sprov, the creator of this amazing device, actually made a video about how something like this has already been banned in California. Don't tell Justin Trudeau about that, okay? So uh, let's try to keep this on the low low and let's make sure that this video only gets 1 million views. Not 1 million and one, because you know they're gonna come knocking. All right, guys, take care. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. And if you wanna get one of these, go get one at gogun.com. Thanks for watching, Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at canadianpreparedness.com, where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget, the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.